student at the University of Kentucky as a black woman is very, very different. So the curriculum they're teaching is all white artists. Artists who, as a black woman, I won't be able to relate to because I don't have the same mindset, same experiences, don't have the same point of view as you know our white counterparts. And it's very important for artists because in order to be inspired, in order to be who you are, you have to be yourself in order to be an artist because you can't make the art of someone else's you know, lifestyle or what they go through. So it was hard for me to fully reach my potential because I was never, I never had that influence of people who looked like me or who were like me. Like I was the only black student in my class. It was either me and one other person or it was just me by myself. Welcome to the Young the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And the focus and the premise of this show is to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree, right? So that's beyond the court, the pool, the track, the green, uh, wherever it might be, whatever it is that you do. And, and we like to bring on uh, different, diverse individuals, giving them the chance to share their stories, strategies, and successes. And today, you know, is, is un just like every other uh, episode, but I'm really excited uh, to have, have our guest today because this young lady, I, I, was, I was looking her up a little bit and checking out just some of the stuff that she's done and, you know, just a little bit of her background. I was like, man, okay, she got this going. She got that going. Uh, so so without, without further ado, um, she, is, she is a student, right? She's an art student at, at Howard, and she also runs track as well. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and welcome uh, Miss Darcy Khan to Beyond the Ball. Darcy, how we doing? How you feeling? How you feeling? I am amazing. I'm feeling amazing. Everything's good. I'm feeling blessed. <laughs> Dope, dope, dope. Glad, glad to have you. And please, I, I know I didn't hit everything, so please take take a, take a moment and uh, you know just share with the people a little snapshot, a little bit more about who you are, and you know so just yeah, just 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 take take a moment. Take uh, like you said, I'm an art student here at the Howard University. Um, I'm also a hurdler, a short hurdler. It tried me in long hurdles. But that's not really up my alley. <laughs> um, I am also a family girl family and friends that's what i'm really really big on and yeah all right all right fair enough so let let's just go ahead and dive into it darcy let, let's let's go ahead and get into it so you're currently at you're currently at howard now but mm -hmm. this, this this isn't where you this isn't where you started your college your collegiate career where, where, where did you start your collegiate career and and just just talk a little bit about talk a little bit about that that transition Okay. Um, I started my collegiate career at the University of Kentucky. I was there for three years. So I graduated high school in 2019, got to Kentucky 2019 fall. And of course, I was one of those COVID kids where COVID hit um, our freshman year. So I was blessed enough to be able to experience a little bit of a freshman year. I had the whole first semester and then it was cut short. Um, so it was a little bit different. Um, fall semester was real lit, you know, real turned up coming in with a hard working group of kids. Like um, I was with collegiate record holders. I'm training with collegiate record holders, professional athletes day in and day out. Um, so that was definitely an experience. And then um, transitioning from COVID or pre-COVID to post-COVID was a little bit different too. You know, you had to, I was a young 19 year old trying to figure out how to um, balance being an athlete and being a student. And it's hard, it was a little bit harder for us because we didn't have the structure of going to class and you know, being in person. So it was up to us as student athletes to make our own kind of schedule because on Zoom, you don't really have control over anything. I was, I was one of the people that was all going to Zoom and going to sleep. I'm not gonna lie, stressful for me, um, that little transition there. Um, but as far as track goes, it was, Coming in my freshman year, I had no expectations because I'm just a freshman. I'm just here to just, you know, get my feet wet kind of thing. And so I was just running. So I ran my fastest time ever my freshman year in the indoor season because I was just out there just going. I wasn't thinking too much about anything. I was just, you know, I'm just here trying to get up to the next people level. But then when you come back as a vet, it's kind of like you have this expectation on yourself. It's like you put this pressure on yourself to do better than you did the year before. So I was kind of adding stuff to it instead of just doing what I needed to do. So all that together kind of put 
a strain on my so that I put on myself. It wasn't anybody outside of me putting it on me, but I put it on myself to be the best I can be. And sometimes that's kind of hard instead of just enjoying the process. So um, fast forward to last year, which is my junior year. Um, starting off the year, January 1st, which is my mom's birthday, my grandmother passed away. So on my mom's birthday, I had to let her know that her mom passed away. And that was the start of my 2022. So I was dealing with that. And then when you're a student athlete at the SEC Division One level, those things you can't really grieve. You can't really go through, you know, what people go through because you still have to be an athlete and be a student. So, of course, I was in the best headspace. I wasn't running my best. I wasn't running what I thought I should be running. <laughs> and I wasn't really trusting the process that God had for me. So because of that, I kind of got myself into a a mutt that was really, really hard to get out of because I'm trying to, you know, do good on the track. I'm trying to make my family happy. I'm trying to make myself happy. And I was turning the track for that happiness when in reality I should have been, you know, finding joy in anything that I had going on, whether it was school, whether it was track, whatever, whatever. But it all goes back to God. Um, if I didn't go through that mutt, I wouldn't have had the courage to transfer schools and be the person I am today and be able to tell the story of being a PWI student athlete for three years and transferring to HBCU where I'm at now. And I'm loving it. I'm happy. I'm not in that same mud of, you know, trying to put all this pressure on myself. I, my goal is to be the best athlete that I can be and that I, I know I can be and then show other people that you can go to HBCUs, get a great education, and also be an amazing athlete. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, well for, for, first of all, first of all, um, you know, so, sorry to hear about, sorry to hear about uh, G-Ma, you know, pa passing on yeah. um, and everything like that. And you having to be the one that you said you ha you were the one to tell your mom. Yes. That your grandma passed. Because my dad, my dad was out of town for work on New Year's because my dad is in the music industry. So we all know how that kind of goes. So he was out on business. And so it was just me and my mom just chilling on New Year's and bringing her birthday. And at five in the morning, my cousin called me because my mom was answering the phone to tell me that my grandmother passed away. And so I had to go wake my mom up on her birthday at five in the morning to let her know that her mom had passed away. So yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. And then I had to wake up. I was supposed to be going back to school on January 1st, but of course I had to wait one more day because I couldn't go home in that state. So the next day after that, I had to drive six hours back to school and be at practice on Monday as if nothing really happened. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're a student athlete or you're a staff that support them, this is just for you. Listen up. I wrote a free ebook helping student athletes to successfully transition post-graduation. It's seven things, right? Seven things I laid out. I talked about, of course, having a LinkedIn profile. I talked about having a way to develop themselves. And I talk about five more things in this ebook. So hit the link just down below, download it. It's for free. You will thank me later. All right, it's Jonathan Jones. I'm out. Right back to the episode. Can, 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 you, just, can you just talk to us for a second about, because I, I, I mean, you know, the majority of people are not in a Power Five conference you know, mm -hmm. if it be the SEC or Big 12, Big 10, and you know, everybody has their own rankings wherever it may, may, may sit and everything like that. But can you just talk about the demands of being an SEC track athlete, mm -hmm. please? Because, you know, somebody <laughs> hearing this might be like, well, you know, well, why couldn't you just snap back? And why, just, 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 just talk about that for a second for the, for the individual who's, who's aspiring to be, you know, a, a division one, first of all, division one, mm -hmm. That's one thing. Yeah. And then Division One Power Five SEC athlete. Just 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 talk a little bit about that for a second. I definitely can. So um recently my dad and I just had a conversation about this actually because um I was talking about the difference between running at Howard and Kentucky. Like at Howard, I go to practice for an hour, hour thirty minutes at max, and then go to weights for thirty minutes and I'm I'm done with athletics the rest of the day. And so I, that's two hours out of my day that I have to be an athlete, and the rest is whatever I need to do, clubs, painting, class, whatever. 
Whereas if you're at a Power 5 school or at Kentucky, I'm at practice for four hours, maybe five hours sometimes. And this is after having weights at 6 a.m. that morning. So I had six, weights at 6 a.m. there for an hour. And then because it's different for every group because I was a hurdler. Hurdlers are more of a technical um, type of thing. I have to have more rest and, you know, more reps than sprinters and other um, events. So for us, there's days where we have four or five hour practices. And after I'm at the track for four or five hours, I'm still, this is after class. I said I go home, eat. I said I got to go do homework. I still got to catch up with my family members. I still got, you know, you still have like laundry, grocery shopping, whatever it is. And so it's like we're, we were living the life of professional athletes who don't have, you know, school obligations or anything like that. And so it's kind of hard. It's, it's, it's a little bit easier for the people who want to go to the next level. Like if your goal, if you know your mind and your heart and God put it on your heart that you want to go to the next level, you want to be a professional athlete, Power 5 SEC school is 110% for you. Now, if you're on the other side of the spectrum, like me, you're, you're going to school, you're running track to get your school paid for, it's a little bit harder mentally for you because you're already not in the mental state of, like, working on that professional level. You're just here to really get an education. Um, so it's a, it's a very big difference between a Power 5 and, you know, a Division I um, lower I guess you would say lower division one school, I guess you would say. So yeah, it's kind of a big difference. And then like with my grandmother passing away, having to be at practice the next day, it's like, cause it's like, it, it's this mental battle. It's like, do I go to practice and, you know, get 1% better and compete with the best of the best? Or do I not go to practice and then just let people get a one up on me or an extra day of practice on me? or get better than me, and I'm just at home just crying and sad. It's kind of like that middle battle. And, you know, it's really up to the athlete whether you want to go that professional route or you want to go the, you know, school route where you're really trying to get that top, top education type of thing. Man, that's <laughs> that's real. That's that's real, and that's that's tough. Yeah. Uh, man, wow. So, so PWI versus – versus HBCU or or not even necessarily verse but you know just 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 a comparison so th mm -hmm. thanks for you know thank thanks for shining a little bit of light on that for for mm -hmm. us that weren't you know division one athletes or anything yeah. like that <laughs> so but um yeah so you so so you you're currently an, an art student T tell us a little bit more about that like like when when, when we talk because when I hear art student you mm -hmm. know I like I think of looking at some of the older artists or maybe a little bit of poetry or I think back to like middle school art class like what what does that consist of for you or, or, or what's your main focus um, okay with, with, so, with you and art question for you do you want me to talk about the Kentucky or the Howard side because they're oh, two wow I never yeah. even thought it can <laughs> can you can you talk a little bit about both please because uh you know they taking out um you know african-american studies in school yeah. um, mm -hmm. so, I, very, very, so very, i think very. we need i think we need this education help help, help us out darcy help us out okay so our, our art student at the university of kentucky as a black woman is very very different so the curriculum they're teaching is all white artists artists who as a black woman i won't be able to relate to because i don't have the same mindset same experiences don't have the same point of view as you know my, our white counterparts and it's very important for our artists because in order to be inspired in order to be who you are you have to be yourself in order to be an artist because you can't make the art of someone else's you know lifestyle or what they go through so it was hard for me to fully reach my potential because i was never i never had that influence of people who look like me or who were like me. like i was the only black student in my class it was either me and one other person or it was just me by myself and so it was a lot different so i was kind of in that environment i was just existing you know learning the basics but i wasn't able to build into the artist i knew i could be and so with the transition at Howard, it is a completely different thing. So I would say University of Kentucky as a black woman, I'm not speaking for our white counterparts, but as a black woman, artist, female artist, it was more like school. Where when I came to Howard, 
it was more of an education for me. I was being educated on slaves who were artists. I was being educated on how white people talk about black artists and how it can shape our minds in viewing black artists. Um, when I go to class, it doesn't feel like class to me. It kind of feels like a like a club session. Like we're all able to talk about our experiences. We're able to like have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our professors. Like I'm able, I can call my professors on the phone and ask them to help me with an essay. Like if I don't know a certain word or if they've heard about this artist or know this artist personally, I can call them and be like, hey, do you know whatever, whatever? And Kentucky, I didn't have that experience because I didn't have that personal relationship with my professors. Like Kentucky, I can't tell you one of my professors. Like I don't, I don't remember any of their names. I don't know nothing about them. Whereas at Howard, I know all my professors by first and last name. They know me by first and last name. Every single one of them. Like I have a personal relationship with everybody and it's like a full community. And like they're educating on you not to sell yourself short when you're an artist because it's easy to be like, you know, I'm gonna do this for $20 just to get a little change. But you have to understand you're an educated black artist who deserves more than just a little $20 after working eight hours or 12 hours on the piece. So it's a very, very big difference. And it doesn't really feel like school to me anymore. I actually enjoy going to class. I dread, if I miss a class, I'm like, dang, I gotta go to class today because I can't miss this. Like I forget that I can make a dentist appointment during class time to give them, my, them an excuse because I don't want to miss class. I want to be in class. I don't want to miss anything. It's like, I need to get, it soak up everything I can. So, man, see, that's the way school's supposed to be. You know, yeah. is is you supposed to be excited about learning? You supposed to not want to miss nothing. And then yeah. when you when you have the experience, like you saying, mm -hmm. I wish that I had the experience a lot of times that I was on a I had a personal relationship with my professors, not just yeah. you know I got to talk with you when I'm missing something or whatever it might be. But I but I think that's really dope, you know, for you to be able to um, have the two experiences to parallel yeah. to show other people like what one side looks like um, mm -hmm. compared to the other. Uh, but but e but even the the aspect of what you're saying, like from the perspective of a black woman, and you're like, I hear y'all telling me about all these artists that you know you all may know, you know your yeah. your Caucasian counterparts. But then on the other side, it's like, but this isn't inspiring me. And if it's not making me better, then why am I here? So, yeah, that's, that's, that's real. That's real. I started out as a kinesiology major coming into college because I was like, you know, I just want to, I was kind of in that mindset. I'm just coming here to do track and school is going to handle itself. But I forgot that I, like when I came out of high school, I was, you know, I graduated summa cum laude. laude. I had great grades. I loved school. Like, I, I wasn't the type of person to just be going to school just to run track. So I changed my course to doing something that I love to do and that I love to be educated on and be a professional at it. And then ever since then, like my freshman year, I was like dreading going to class. I don't want to do this biology work. I don't want to do this chemistry, nothing. Like I don't like this. And so when I switched, it was like a whole new world for me to love school and want to, you know, learn everything about the art world. Come on, summa cum laude. Yeah, come on, or, or, or laude. I don't know which one it is either. Yeah, I don't but, know either. One of them. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it don't matter. You got it. So it don't. Hey, it don't. It don't matter. Yeah. So, so when we when we talk about the art, which is the piece to where you're like, I enjoy this the most? Because I know, I, I know your verse with photography. I know you got the experience with videography, and then you got the digital, and then the modeling, the painting, the drawing, like which piece or or, or, or just, just just break down for us a little bit, like where's your go-to or like mm -hmm. your bread and butter if you need something to, you know, get away or you just have an idea you want to get out, what, which, which is the which is the first way you going to? First for me is painting every time. I just love painting. It's, it's like a piece for me. It's kind of like you make a mistake, all you gotta do is just paint a little bit over it. And most of the times your mistakes are what create the work for you. Um, something that I also enjoy is like videography, but I'm more of the, have the idea and direct it. I'm not the type of person to record it and edit it. I'm not doing all that, like I can't. I cannot sit in front of a computer and edit all day, I can't. That's why I love doing YouTube, I love recording, I love getting my story out. 
but the editing part is sitting behind a computer and stand, I just, it's just not for me. I just can't get to it. But painting definitely is my go-to, like 10 out of 10. I got you. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's cool. I, I mean, I I definitely get that too. I I, I get it with the editing. Yeah. It's it's definitely a labor of love. It's it's a, it's, it's definitely yes. a labor a labor of love to 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 say to say the least. Okay, mm-hmm. so where where do you want this art to take you in a, in a in a perfect world? Like, where do you want this 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 art? Mm-hmm. So for me, yeah, talk to us. My all-time dream: sell me a good two, three million dollar piece, couple of them, have my own art show, um, be that person that people call when they have an idea for something but need somebody to put it on paper. I want them. I want to be that person. Um, like I kind of just want to be able to be a creative and just let it just take me wherever it's taking me. I don't have like a plan of like exactly what I want to do, but I know I want to sell them a couple pieces for two, three mil here and there, have my own art show. Those are my biggest dreams. But outside of that, wherever the art takes me, I'm willing to go. Fair enough. Fair Mm -hmm. enough. Fair enough. But yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's super cool for, for you to be so, so down to earth and for you to be as experienced as you are, like with the arts, Cause we didn't even talk about instruments, but don't you you play an instrument or two, don't you? Um, I you can. Do? Okay, I would. I'm a professional at it, but my dad, um, he was a musician all his life, and now he's a production manager and he's in the music world. So he teaches me a little bit here and there. But during COVID, all I was doing was playing the guitar, playing the piano, trying to learn how to play the bass guitar. So, yeah. <laughs> You, I mean, you, you just listed off like a couple of instruments, like, like those are like, that's easy. <laughs> I mean, and, and this it's comes from definitely, somebody. Definitely not easy. Definitely not easy, but it is something that I do enjoy doing though. I do love instruments. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, cause I tried to play the flute. I mean, I, I cause I saw like my brother plays the sax. He make it look so easy. He just, he didn't really practice. And then I, I joined the band. I got, I got one of the little polo shirts and had the little flute <laughs> stitched on there. But I did not want to practice ever, and then no. it showed. I we were in concerts. I had I held my flute, but I was not blowing nothing. Okay, <laughs> I'm not blowing nothing into the flute at all because I didn't know the notes. I just <laughs> just make it, make it. It's okay. <laughs> you I made mean, it through the concert. <laughs> hey, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so all right, so now 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 we're we're gonna we're gonna transition to this segment. Um, that I was telling you about a little bit before, uh, and it's called it's called Dear Student Athlete, right? Mm-hmm. And this is just the opportunity I want to I want to give to you, uh, Darcy, to be able to let let a uh, up and coming student athlete or a current student athlete like what's a tip or a word of a word of wisdom that that you would just want to share with them. A word of wisdom that I would say to all of my fellow student athletes is never quit never quit and also always put your books first because i know as a student athlete it's kind of hard to remember how important education is but never forget that the reason you're at school is to get an education and to play whatever sport it is that you're playing and to not quit because last year i wanted to quit Last year, I tried to quit. I, when I was at University of Kentucky, I went to my coach's office and I told him that I didn't want to run track anymore. And I boohooed and I cried. And I knew it was God when my coach told me no. <laughs> and later on, he told me that he thought I was talking about the 400 hurdles quitting. He didn't know I wanted to quit the entire sport altogether until a few weeks later. And because of him telling me that no, and because I wasn't able to quit, I am now in a whole new world that I would have never been able to see if I would have quit. And so when it gets hard, just know that there's always something at the end of the rainbow because in the moment it's hard to see it, but when you look back, you'll know why everything went the way it went. So I would say never quit, always keep going so you can't go anymore and all the blessings will follow. 
coach told you no, that's wild. But okay. <laughs> no. He said, no. He said you are too talented. You are not doing it. But in his defense, he thought I was talking about something totally different. So, but I'm glad he told me no. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Sometimes no is good, right? Yes, Sometimes no. Definitely. Fair definitely. Enough. I wouldn't be here today if I if you would have said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, praise God. Praise yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. Now, now we're to one of this is probably one of my favorite parts. Uh, this this is our this is our rapid fire segment uh, where I'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions and you're just gonna have just a little bit of fun and okay. just show the people a, a different side of you. Darcy, are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. All right, here we go. Favorite cereal. Apple Jacks. There's no right or wrong answer. You saying it? Apple, it's Apple Jacks. I can't okay. Some Apple Jacks. I think I want. Okay, some. fair enough. What's your What's your go to breakfast food? Oatmeal. Anybody can tell you that. I'm gonna eat oatmeal every single day for the rest of my life. <laughs> I mean, spoke spoken like a true uh, athlete, so that's fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's What's the worst What's the worst drill for track and field? Like this is the one you hate. Um, I would just say skip for distance or karaoke. Karaoke uh, is just pointless to me. <laughs> just don't get karaoke it. is karaoke is kind of fun. I mean, we're well, not fun. I mean, it's a drill. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> what's your like? What's your favorite meat? Like, you look forward to this one on 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 the schedule. You like this is the one. Like, I'm looking forward to it. What what's your favorite meat? Hmm. I. Well, I have to say any of the relay meets. If the if the meet ends with relay, whether it's Texas relays, Florida relays, any of those relay meets, I'm gonna always look forward to them because they always be lit. <laughs> Everyone is always there. The stand is always packed. Love it. Fair enough. And then who who has the best track? Ooh. Mm. From my experience, the best outdoor track. I think it's going to have to go to Texas A&M. The best indoor track is probably going to have to go to Arkansas. Ah, whoop mm -hmm. pig. Yeah, they got they have a really good indoor track and Texas A&M has a really good outdoor track. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh so now we 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 winding this thing down about the land is plain. Um but before we actually do this winter circle of the week, I want to shout out I want to shout out Janai Davis. Cause Janai Davis is is the plug on, on, on who got us connected and who made this happen. So shout out to Janai Davis, who's oh, down there. Yeah. Damn you, that, that's my school coon from way back when. <laughs> yeah. So what did, did like did y'all y'all grew up together? Yes, we literally grew up together. We became we've been best friends since fifth grade. Wow. Great. We didn't travel the world together. We didn't did a lot of stuff together. <laughs> Since fifth grade, hold on, wait a minute, wait before we go into winter circle. We you got you got to tell it like how do you hold down how do you hold down a friendship since fifth grade and y'all, you know, y'all yeah. complete different places. I mean, both of y'all on the east coast, but y'all y'all different out here on the east coast. How, how, how I, do you hold down a friendship for that long? Um, I think because at at a certain point they don't become your friend anymore. They're more family and sisters. So like. Of course, we had our fights. We had our times we didn't talk to each other. But I feel like those moments were what brought us closer. And, like, even coming to college, like our transition from high school to college was not the easiest. Like, we were in two totally different worlds. We had two totally different things going on. Like, it was a lot. We had Now we have different friend groups. So it was, like, it's very – it's not an easy road. But any relationship worth fighting for is never going to be easy. So it's, like – I know who she is. She know who I am, and it's like the bread and butter. Bread and butter. <laughs> shout, shout out to the bread or the butter. I'm not sure which one she would be. Y'all, y'all can work that out. Uh, but shout out to Janai Davis once again. Love her for a long time. <laughs> shout out to her. So now, now we're to the winner circle of the week, and Darcy, aka Queen Khan, right? Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who, who, who would be your winner circle of the week? Like, this is somebody you might feel has been overlooked, but somebody you know is out here, you know, do, doing their thing, whatever mm-hmm. whatever that means. If it's athletics, if it's a staff, if it's somebody doing their stuff in the classroom, but you think they're a really dope individual and you think I should interview them next, Darcy Khan, who is that person for you? Hmm. I have a couple people in mind. That's fine. So somebody that I know that could be overlooked and is very, very talented and is an amazing person. Um, it's Jessica Wright. She's one of my teammates now. She's a 400 hurdler. And I feel as if her journey, um, people hearing about how she got to where she is now, I feel like it's a story that needs to be heard. Um, somebody else that could be overlooked. Um, my best friend, Masai Russell. She also... Um, a lot of people don't really know her full story. They kind of know like what she puts on the internet, but like they don't really know the nitty nitty gritty of it. So that's somebody that I feel like the story that goes into it, chef's kiss. <laughs> chef's kiss. And then people, so. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. So we're going to get ready to land the plane and I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to end it by asking you this. I'm gonna end it. This 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 will be our this will be our final words. What did I not ask you that I should have? What did you not ask me that you should have asked me? Hmm. What do you think got me to the point that I'm at now? Okay, well, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you answer your own question now. The thing that got me to where I am now is God. Simple answer, God. And because of God, I was able to be blessed with an amazing support system, with an amazing family, and amazing friends, and amazing coaches, both at Kentucky and here at Howard. And yes, so without God, I would not have any of this. I would not have the people around me. So. That's my answer. There it is. Bless God. <laughs> Bless up. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Well, uh, well, oh, well, please let people know where they can find you, how they can follow you, and how they can connect with you, Darcy, so they can continue to, you know, stay locked into your journey and, you know, continue to, to support you if it be in person or if it be, you know, on, on your YouTube channel or something like that. Please let people know where they can, where they can connect with you. My Instagram is Queen Khan, Q V E E N K H A N N. And then my YouTube is just Darcy Simone. That's simple if you want to tune into some of my old stuff. I haven't posted recently, but yeah, so I guess that's on. There it is. There it is. Well, <laughs> Queen Khan, I appreciate you taking the time to, uh, you know, to, to, to bless to bless the stage, bless the mic, and uh, you know, share share your story and share your heart with us. Um, we're we're better today because of you. So thank you for 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 stopping by, and thank you for you know for for blessing us one time for the one time. <laughs> of course, thank you so much for the opportunity. Most definitely, most definitely, family out there. Uh, I know you all really just enjoyed this episode, and I know you all really. Uh, we're really inspired by, by by Darcy. So I would encourage you just to, if you're watching on YouTube, drop something down in the comments. Like, what was your biggest takeaway, or you know, what what was something that really inspired you uh, by way of our conversation? And if you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay connected with everything uh, that we do with Beyond the Ball and everything like that. But family, uh, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. Oh, 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 oh,